You're listening to the Be a Better Lawyer podcast with Dina Cataldo, episode 124. So how do high achieving lawyers break through generations of being taught that we have to grind ourselves into the ground to get results for clients, build a successful business and create a life we love? While law schools are busy teaching the rule of law, they're slacking on teaching us how to be a better human to create for ourselves the success we thought we'd achieve after law school. This podcast bridges the gap between law school and life. Hello, hello, my friend. I hope you are having a lovely day whenever you are listening to this. Hopefully, you are enjoying some nice fall weather wherever you are. I'm sitting here with my cup of coffee recording this early in the morning, and I'm about to go on my morning walk. But I wanted to just say that wherever you're listening to this, I hope you and your family are safe and sound and that you can take a deep breath and appreciate everything that you have right now. Let's go ahead and do that. Since this is a podcast about training our brain to relax, take a big breath in, hold it at the top, hold it, and then exhale, open your mouth and let it go. Doesn't that feel good? Our physiology really impacts how we feel as much as our thoughts do. And we don't really focus on that in this podcast because I'm really talking to you about thinking and how our thoughts are impacting everything, but our physiology plays a big part in that too. And when we get into different routines physically, then we can have a more positive impact on us. So I want you to keep that in mind, that that is something that is available to you. This podcast is about thought work. So I am going to focus on that for the rest of this episode. I want to share with you that there's one thing more than anything else that helped me rewire my brain to consistently relax, and that's consistent coaching. And when I created my coaching program, I wanted to create a container that allowed my clients to show up as they were, stressed out, overwhelmed, a hot mess even, and know that they had time with me each week to refocus their brain on what they wanted to clear their head. And I also wanted them to know that they would be taken care of and given questions to redirect their brain over and over again to what they were working on with me. And I found this really effective, creating their results faster than they thought possible. Same thing with me. I felt a physiological impact when I do yoga, but when I do my thought work, I progress towards my goals faster. I progress towards what I'm, I want faster when I am consistently doing some of the work that we're going to talk about today. And when we're given that space with a coach to be ourselves, hot mess and all without judgment, it's freeing. It's a feeling I never had with my colleagues at the office And I don't know many lawyers who have that kind of positive experience where they can open up and be vulnerable with another lawyer who understands what they're going through. And when I experienced that, it allowed me to open up about my most personal and really what I thought were ugly thoughts in my brain and understand that I was 100% normal. It also helped me see that I could shape how I thought about my life and feel better without changing a thing if that's what I wanted. In fact, we have to love ourselves and feel what we want. Like it's usually just to feel happy. We have to feel that now in order for us to feel it when we have achieved our goal. It It's required to shape our lives the way we want to shape it. And coaching really helped me see that I could do that, that I could shape my life in that way. If this soul-changing work is something you want to do and you want to do it with me, you can learn how to work with me at dinacataldo.com and you can just book a call with me and we'll take it from there. This takes me to the number one problem I hear from lawyers. What is it you ask? Well, I'm so glad that you're interested. They can't get their brain to turn off. Have you experienced this when they try to sleep? 
Their brain runs through all the things they did wrong during the day or turns to the to-do list they have to get through tomorrow. And when they're spending time with their partner, they're thinking about the office, their to-do list, and they feel like they have to check their email to stay on top of work. And when they're trying to get focused work done, like really get it done, their brain wants to go into overwhelm and tell them that they have a ton to do, so they better hurry up. And of course, that freezes them in inaction. And when you are a lawyer with your own practice, you can add on to all of these things, keeping you up at night, the worries of building your practice, paying employees, all of those little things that happen during the day running through your head. Oh, and let's also not forget that right now there's a pandemic. Our brain has a lot of thoughts about the world, okay, including... We've got a presidential election going on. Sorry, didn't want to mention that one, but you got to vote. Okay, that's that's the requirement here. So you can probably see that not knowing how to rewire our lawyer brain is a huge problem and it costs us productivity, peace of mind. It can cost us our relationships and our sense of well-being. But how do we do that when we have all of these thoughts running through our brain and they're causing us to procrastinate, to feel like we're not enough because we're not doing all the things we think we need to do. If you are new to thought work, I'm going to break down the model. And if you're not new to thought work, this is a good refresher. Everything that I just mentioned, the to-do lists, the email in your inbox, the files in your office, COVID-19, the election, they are all circumstances. They are all things that just exist in the world. The drama in our brain starts when we begin thinking about them. We stress ourselves out when we think things like, I have too much to do. I can't stay on top of it all. What is wrong with me that I can't get this all done? This pandemic is really hurting business. Ugh, this election. Oh, there's so many words that so many people have used about this election, yeah? All those thoughts I just mentioned are all just sentences in our brains. They're not true. We decide if we want to believe them or not. Don't believe me? All right, so I used to think that feeling stressed out was just part of being a lawyer. It was a fact. I mean, there was no way around it. Then I discovered that I had control over what I felt. I didn't have to do everything perfectly. I didn't have to work 70 hours a week. I didn't have to use alcohol to unwind. There were all kinds of thoughts that I had that I needed to unravel, and it took me slowing down my brain to uncover some of these thoughts before I could unravel them and really see them. And what do I mean by that? When we are working on our brain, we've got to journal. And this is something that our brain resists because it's hard and we think we're going to see ugly thoughts. But we've got to write it down because that is going to help us see all these stray thoughts in our brain. And don't ignore them because our brains work so quickly. We've got to slow it all down so that we can begin seeing these stray thoughts that we have and understand, okay, this is why I'm creating this procrastination. This is why I'm creating this stress in my life is because I believe this is how it's supposed to be. So it's just taking some of that Well, it's really just slowing down our brain so we can begin seeing that. So let me give you another example of thoughts and how they are not fact. So people saw the very same presidential debates Tuesday night and thought completely different things. Someone thought that one of them looked like a bully and another seemed nice. Someone thought that one looked strong and another looked weak. Someone else thought that they wanted to vote for the incumbent, and someone else thought that they wanted to vote for anyone else besides the incumbent. Someone else thought they didn't want to vote at all. Plus, there were about a thousand other thoughts that people thought that night, right? There are so many thoughts, and they can all be different about the exact same experience. We can watch the exact same debate, a circumstance in the world, and have different thoughts about it. 
And you may think you have a million emails in your inbox, but someone else like Bill Gates can think that's not many at all. He can't, that's, that's not a problem. And you may think the pandemic is hurting business when other lawyers are seeing a boost in business during the pandemic, or other lawyers have seen an opportunity to work differently and work better in the pandemic. Now, you might think that you have too much to do, but if someone else looked at your calendar, they might wonder what you do with all your time. We have a lot of thoughts, and they aren't necessarily true. We tend to get stuck in our drama because we're married to the belief that our thoughts are true. And I work with my clients on this all the time. It seems like sometimes they forget about it (laughs) because the week between sessions, like so much has happened in their brain. And maybe they skip a week of journaling and then they come back and they're like, oh yeah, that's right. Let me get my brain back on track. Oh yeah, let me see why why this does work. Why <laughs> working on my brain does work. Oh yeah, I feel so much better already. And they swear their employees aren't doing what they want them to do because they're not very bright. <laughs> when the truth may actually be that they're not doing what they want them to do because they they haven't taken the time to train their employees properly. I have clients who swear up and down that creating a calendar is just going to take way too much time from their work. Then when they begin to think differently about trying it, they revolutionize how they spend their time and bill more hours than they thought possible. Our thoughts are not truth. The cool thing is about our brains is that we get to decide what get to decide what truth is. We get to decide what to think. There are no thought police. We can believe whatever we want and we don't have fact checkers running around after us. You get to decide what you want to believe. And a belief is just a thought that we have over and over again. If you want to begin rewiring your brain to relax, then this is the first thing to understand. The thoughts you have about having to check your email during dinner, about having to be available by phone after hours, about you having to put more hours in at the office to make your hours are not true. You're choosing to believe them because that's what you're used to thinking. Your brain has thought those same thoughts over and over again, so it's a really easy habit, and our brain tends to want to create efficiency, and once it has these thoughts that it thinks you want to think all the time, it just keeps repeating them over and over and over again. It's like that midday snack we're used to grabbing when we're not even hungry. It's midday, okay, our brain's like, oh, hey, this is when we get a quick dopamine hit, let's go get that snack, and it just happens over and over again like clockwork. We think a thought like, oh, it's midday. I want a cookie. And we have that cookie. The kind of deep relaxation we all crave is the result of rewiring our brain over time. We're all looking for the quick fix here. I know you want a quick fix, but a quick fix doesn't exist when it comes to really getting this relaxation access. This access to relaxation, the ability to relax at will, comes with working on ourselves. It comes with never-ending self-improvement, millimeter by millimeter. That's why coaching is so impactful in changing people's lives. It's because every week they come to a session to have their brain scrubbed clean and a light shined on all those corners in their brain, all the thoughts that are keeping them from getting the results that they want. And until we learn to see our thoughts for what they are, we can't rewire our brain. But it's not like all of a sudden you're rewired. You do this kind of deep mental work on yourself you're going to constantly uncover something new about how your brain thinks and why you're getting what you are getting. Doing thought work is an unfolding. You know, I think about those old maps in the movies when people thought Earth was flat and there would be this continent. You just see one continent and there'd be ocean around it. And then way out in the ocean, there'd be calligraphy that says, here there be dragons. And when you're devoted to self-mastery, you're like a sailor pushing your limits into uncharted territories. You don't know what you're going to find. And sometimes it's a little scary. So I'm going to give you some questions to begin asking yourself as you embark on this journey. And I'm going to read them twice so you can write them down and answer them after this podcast. If you're driving, be sure to come back to this section because this is where the meaty stuff is. And I want you to really take advantage of these questions. These are just a few things you can start asking yourself so that you can begin understanding how your brain works. They're going to stretch your brain a little bit and it's going to help it see other possibilities. And this is part of retraining your brain. You help it see possibility. 
Then you decide where you want to focus your brain. Do you want to let it run amok and do what it wants and allow it to stress you out, make you overwhelmed with all its thoughts? Or do you want to take the reins and let it and tell it where it wants to focus on, where you want it to focus on? So what we focus on, just in case you don't remember from other podcasts, it expands. If we want new results in our life, we have to think differently. It's really comfortable for our brain that's practiced these old thoughts, but this practice is necessary if you want to unwind your tense brain and give it space to breathe. You know, it was so funny. I was When I was writing this podcast, I was thinking about my dad and he was so tense all the time. I mean, he was building a business. I grew up in that. And so I really saw all of the reactionary responses. He didn't work. He didn't do this kind of work. And I think about, you know, what kind of an impact this kind of work would have had on him, on his temper, on his focus, on his ability to be present, because I've seen such a huge impact on it in my life. And I have created a business and I have, you know, gone through law school and, um, and still have my legal practice. It's like all of this work made such a huge impact on me and seeing how my dad was in his business. It was, it was night and day thinking about how we are as humans. So this work is incredibly impactful when you do it. Okay. It will allow your brain to give it space and unwind. So here are some questions that I want you to ask yourself, like really write these down. These are meant to be journaling exercises. When you have like a morning, pick one of these questions and just write on it. Here we go. Number one, what would your day, your week, your month look like if it were easy? Just pick one. What would your day look like if it were easy? When we start focusing our brain on what we want it to look like, something easy instead of hard, our brain starts to come up with answers. So just ask yourself, sit with this, what would it look like if this were easy? What's the worst case scenario if you couldn't check your email during dinner? Or what's the worst case scenario if you couldn't stay late at the office? Whatever whatever your bad habit is that you want to purge, I want you to ask yourself this question about it. Like, what's the worst that could happen? You miss an email and then what? You don't stay late at the office and then what? Like, why? What? What's the worst case scenario? Is the world going to come tumbling down? And sometimes when we work out the worst case scenario, we recognize that we're stressing over nothing. The third question you can ask yourself is, can you commit for a week to not beating yourself up over anything? If not, why not? Can you commit for a week to not beating yourself up over anything? If not, why not? This is a very common practice I see among my clients. And I used to do it too. I was thinking about it actually. Um, When was the last time I really beat up on myself? And I can't remember a time when I like said mean things to myself. Like the worst would be like, oh, I'm not doing enough. And then I recognize that for what it is, is it's a thought. And of course I'm doing enough. I'm doing plenty. I don't need to do anything else. I'm fine. But I would really be hard on myself and I wouldn't like the way I looked and I didn't like the way that I, um, there were so many things, um, connected with people, how I talk to people sometimes. Um, I mean, I really was hard on myself, but when I started loving myself, I started changing those habits and that was really the big impact. And when I, I see my clients, um, harming themselves with words that they're constantly using. Like they, they will literally talk badly about themselves when they start working with me. And, and I'm like, well, well, what is that going to do for you? Is that going to help you? So can you commit just for a week to not beating yourself up over anything? Cause we really don't respond to beating ourselves up. Our brain responds to us loving ourselves. And that's a big piece of the puzzle here to relaxing our brain. 
So what do you think is preventing you from sleeping? That's another question I want you to ask yourself. If, if that's the problem that you're having, what do you think is preventing you from sleeping? And I recently did a reel on Instagram about sleep habits and posted about them. If you're not on Instagram, come join me there because I share a lot of things to help you rewire your brain consistently. Go to at Dina, D-I-N-A dot Cataldo, cat and Aldo like the shoe so that you can get that. That's at Dina dot Cataldo. Um, But I'll just talk about it briefly. If you have sleeping issues and you're working on relaxation at night, this thought work is amazing. Just grab a journal, have it by your bed, and write down all of the thoughts that you're having. There's lots of different ways to journal, but one of the most effective ways that I have, if I have like a, like sometimes I will go through these phases where I just have to recognize what's going on in my brain and, and retrain it again, just grab like a journal and just write down all of the things that you're worried about, all of the things that you're thinking about, everything on your to-do list you're afraid that you're going to forget, <laughs> anything you have like that, write it down and put it, put a pen and paper next to your bed. Then you can just write it all down and you won't be worried in your brain. Um, another thing that was really helpful for me is keeping my phone out of my room so that I wasn't, you know, keeping my brain up at night, scrolling through email or tempted if I woke up in the middle of the night to check my email, just keep it out of your room. Okay. What is preventing you from spend? Oh, and let me bring this up too. Because a lot of people tell me, oh, well, I use my phone as an alarm, so I have to leave it in my bedroom. No, you don't. Okay, that's another thought. You do not need to leave your phone in your bedroom. Okay, it can be your alarm and you can have it in another room. You can get another alarm that doesn't have all the email and everything. You know, they do make these old fangled alarms that you could just put in your bedroom. You can do it. It's just a thought that you're thinking that you need to keep your phone in your room. You don't. Okay, let's go to the next question. What's preventing you from spending more quiet time with yourself? What is preventing you from spending more quiet time with yourself? What if you took 100%, this is kind of like a pair here, what if you took 100% responsibility for the time you created for yourself? What if you took 100% responsibility for the time you created for yourself? When we start to look at how we are taking an active part in not creating quiet time with ourselves, we can begin to see, oh, well, I don't do that. Well, why? Why don't I do that? Chances are you're avoiding spending time with yourself. Ask yourself why that is. There's another bonus question for you. (laughs) Why don't you want to spend time with yourself if that's what your issue is? So next question. What if everything was perfect exactly as is right now? What would that mean? What if everything was perfect exactly as is right now? What would that mean? Remember when I said earlier in this podcast, we have to be happy with ourselves now in order to get what we want, that we really like have to love ourselves right now in order to create the life that we love, that's that's it right there. Like recognizing, like appreciating everything that we have right now. How perfect our life is right now. What's one habit you've been thinking about doing, but you've been avoiding? What's one habit you've been thinking about doing, like creating in your life, but you've been avoiding? For instance, getting up early for an a cup of tea, um, journaling, meditating, running, yoga, pick one. Is there something that you wanted to pick up, but you've been avoiding? Why are you avoiding it? Ask yourself, why are you avoiding it? And if you, if that's the case, what, what do you want to make that mean about you? What do you want to make that mean? Seriously, ask yourself these questions. You're going to learn so much about yourself and how your brain works. Just remember that it's totally normal for your brain to avoid even answering these questions. It doesn't want to expend energy and it definitely doesn't want change, especially if it thinks it's going to be hard. And change, it can be hard. I take my coaches through the program and it's it's transformational, but it's hard. It is hard work work. It's some of the hardest work that we've ever done on ourselves because it's forcing us to think 
completely differently and stretch our brains in ways that it's never been stretched before. You have to take it by the reins and tell it what to do. Do I have too many metaphors in this podcast? Anyway, you get my point here. This unraveling of your thoughts is going to help you learn to relax your lawyer brain. It'll help you get clear on why you are holding on so tightly to old thoughts that don't serve you. And then you have the power to choose different thoughts if you'd like to make changes. I would love to hear what you think of this podcast. Be sure to tag me on Instagram at dina.cataldo so I can see your posts. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will talk to you soon. Bye. If you love what you're learning on the podcast, imagine how you'll evolve when you start implementing what you're learning. You can learn how to work with me to do just that by scheduling a free strategy session. Go to dinacataldo.com. That's dinacataldo.com. Talk to you soon.